My name is Kristen Soleil. I teach a class called Legacy of the Witch at the New School, which delves into the history of the witch through a feminist lens. If you want to talk about representations of witches in popular culture over the past 500 years, you have to really talk about representations of women in popular culture and in culture at large over the past 500 years. So the witch hunts ended around the 1700s, um, in Europe at least, in America. But of course the fear of witches uh, continued and at the same time they also morphed into kind of a joke, a, a horror story, uh, something to scare kids with, to scare young women with, you know, don't walk this path, you may get into you know, trouble with Satan or something. Um, but it really wasn't until 1893 with Matilda Jocelyn Gage, uh, an American suffragist, she wrote a book called Woman, Church and State and it reframed the European witch hunts as actually a misogynistic attempt by the church and state to police female sexuality, women's bodies, women's reproductive function, and that is, to my knowledge, the first time the word witch was used in a positive way. And the funny thing about her is, is that her son-in-law was L. Frank Baum, who wrote The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. And so he was inspired by her writing to conceive of the witch as not only evil, but also good. So we have these polarities of the good witch and the bad witch, which then goes into, you know, the MGM film and sets the stage for the way we view witches forever, pretty much. I you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. And then you have, like, I married a witch in the 40s, was so sort of a more lighthearted, there's like blonde witches, you know? They're like glamorous and Bell Book and Candle in the late 50s, and then Bewitched in early 60s coincides right when Betty Friedan's putting out the feminine mystique. So Bewitched is kind of, uh, you know, talking about the plight of the white middle class housewife, just like Betty Friedan's book. And the women's liberation movement is sort of, you know, bubbling under the surface in culture at the time. And Bewitched is also, I think a few episodes were written by uh, self-professed feminist Barbara Abaddon. So there's like actual, some real like early feminist leanings in there. And you know, the way she uses magic is like the way f early feminist thought could be conceived, like, you know, Samantha's husband Darren's really annoyed and always frustrated she's using this magical power. It's like something he can't access, he can't control, and it gives her you know, agency. And even though, you know, it's kind of like a fluffy, funny show, there are some like little radical currents in there that I think are picked up and, and expressed more explicitly in later films in the 70s, 80s, 90s, etc. You're a big dumb head. <laughs> calling me names, man. My favorite representations of the witch are pretty recent, actually. The Witch by Robert Eggers was a fantastic horror film that really um, used period lighting and period text to inform how people viewed witches at the time. And then The Love Witch uh, by Anna Biller, which is uh, a sort of saturated, colorful, um, meditation on sex magic and female sexuality and sort of the world through the female gaze. What was in that drink you gave me? Organic berries, vodka, hallucinogenic herbs. 